Hello there and welcome to Yo Sakura. From this video onwards, I'll be teaching you how to create composites with a nuke. So, in this first video, I'm just going to give you a brief overview about the different conventions that I'll be using while creating composites and also give you a couple of tips and tricks about how to lay down your nodes and how to structure your tree. So, as you can see, on the screen I have created a simple node network and I have also labeled them using these different colored backdrops and I have laid them out in a very particular order and as you can see it already looks very organized whereas here on the side I have another node network which looks very haphazard and it's uh, very hard to understand what exactly is happening here and it will actually take you some time to understand where the nodes are going on and what exactly is happening in the entire tree so, as you can see, uh, while you look at both of these at the same time, this first network looks a lot neater and it's much more easily organized. The reason for creating this organized structure is because, let's say you're in a production house and you have lots of people who are opening your files and uh, each one editing a certain part of it and uh, let's say it's being exchanged a lot. So if you have a neatly organized structure, it'll make it easier for other people to understand what exactly is happening in your node tree and where exactly they have to edit some part or where exactly they had to go to edit something specific whereas if it's very haphazard like this it's going to be a very tough time for them uh, instead also another problem would be let's say you have finished the project and you have left it out for a long time and then the client comes back with some corrections and you had to go back and open your file and it looks like this and trust me this is quite a very small file uh, compared to a couple of node networks you'd have to work with and you will have absolutely no clue what node goes where or what it's doing or why you have put it there so therefore it's going to be quite confusing about why exactly this node network is laid out as such so it's very uh, convenient if you just lay down your node network from the beginning in a particular manner so the main conventions I follow whenever I'm laying down my nodes is that all my inputs or all of my beginning connections start at the top left corner and then as I progress I keep going to the bottom and towards the right so basically anything at the top and left is always the node which has come before anything which is at the bottom or at the right side of it so therefore any node over here this node is a parent of all the nodes which is here at the bottom and to the right side of it so therefore I have followed the same convention here too but it's still very haphazard and it's not very easy to understand so the other conventions that I have followed over here are that all of my background nodes or all the nodes which are sharing the same thing are going down in a straight line so for example I have this uh, single read node here at the top and so many of these nodes are using the same read node and therefore all of them are taking it in from the single line here on the side so therefore it makes it easier to understand where exactly this is being read into apart from that let's say I have this single pre multiply node here on the side you can see all of the nodes at the bottom are being easily you can easily understand where exactly it's being used because it's easily organized on the side and therefore it's much more convenient as you can know exactly where it's being used and for what purposes and here on the side I have done the same thing a single node comes out and it's being used still here to the end so straight lines going across wherever you have uh, same node used multiple times so here as you can see the same node is used multiple times this pre multiply node here is used multiple times whereas it's very hard to understand what exactly it is being used for for example let's say my node let network was as such uh, hopefully no one ever keeps a node network as this but still let's say I have a node network like like this uh, it'll be very hard to understand which is going where or uh, in what order so therefore it's very important that you follow a particular order going upwards downwards in whichever way and um, usually people uh, have followed the same conventions as far as I've encountered them whereas there are a couple of instances like people who are much familiar with Photoshop or let's say After Effects where they do layer based compositing where one is laid on top of another for people who are more convenient in that way they can actually lay down their nodes 
from bottom to the top instead of going from top to the bottom so therefore it is much easier for them to understand whereas just make sure your team understands if uh, you are working on if you're not working as an individual so anyway that is one convention that you have which I have used apart from that uh, anytime I have several composites uh, like for example I have a composite here uh, which is a BG comp which is the composition which is doing the background and here I have another comp which is working only on the foreground part of the composite so therefore both of these are both of these have a single backdrop which lets me move them around as a single unit and treat them as a single unit because they are because that is what they are and also last convention that I like using is that the last node on any composite uh, whether if it's a single branch of the composite or the entire composite I usually have a single color code for all of them for example in here I have them shaded green so that I know that that is the last node that I have to work with to get the proper composite and I usually end all of my compositing branches with a single grade node because it's the easiest to color correct them with so those are a few of the main conventions while laying down the nodes uh, now apart from that uh, the order in which I lay out the nodes is very important too for example when you're doing a 3d composite or any composition for that matter always go from the darkest to brightest uh, what I mean by that is that let me start by opening up this uh, first merge node here on the top as you can see this uh, single plane uh, nothing special on top of it I'll go open up the second node on the branch as you can see it just turned darker meaning it added something which is of a darker value into the same tree and by darker I basically mean anything like shadows ambient occlusion or let's say a uh, depth fog or darkening anything anything at all which makes your scene or elements dark has to be put in in the front so that's what I'm doing here so let's say I go to the next node you can see another shadow came in over there and then I have another shadow on the side and then I have uh, my indirect lighting added on top of that and then on the end I have my reflections and then I have graded the entire thing so as you can see I followed a simple process first I did whatever makes my scene dark and then in the end I made uh, I composited whatever makes my scene lighter so therefore in the end it gives me maximum detail the reason we do it this way is because uh, let's say you have reflections and you composite your shadows on top of them basically your reflections will dull down or your ambient occlusion will dull, dull down the reflections you don't want anything to affect the highlights on your object because that is what is giving the details so therefore this is usually the convention which is followed but always remember make sure you do whatever gives you the best output don't follow any rules so if uh, let's say exchanging the shadow and the reflection gives you a best output then go ahead and do that don't try to follow the same guidelines all the time so apart from that uh, the mo another most important convention I'll be using is that my background and my foregrounds will be composited separately in separate branches and then I'll merge them together in the end so for example here as you can see this is my final background I uh, can see that there is a hollow empty area where the spear is supposed to be and then when I go to my spear you know, composite you can see only the spear is composited and nothing else has happened here and then in the end I merge those two together the background and the foreground come together in a final composite the reason we do it this way is because it uh, makes it much easier to grade or color correct the background compared to the foreground this is especially useful for people who are uh, compositing VFX shots because the background is usually the plate which is shot uh, or the actual plate and then you're compositing 3D elements on top of it so therefore the background element needs to have some reflections ambient occlusion and shadows which have to be cast into the scene so therefore you had to do a separate composite for that and then for the foreground elements so therefore uh, those are the few main conventions to use next apart from that uh, last I would like to show you how exactly I created these backdrops I'm not sure if I created those in the previous videos so let me just copy a couple of these nodes onto the side here so if you have a couple of nodes uh, each one working for a specific uh, target or reason uh, just select the nodes uh, and then come down to the other menu at the bottom 
and here you have the option for backdrop and by just clicking on it all the selected notes will immediately get a backdrop and uh, once you have a backdrop you can just double click on the name and uh, give it anything you want for let's say this is uh, uh, BG1 and immediately it is named as such and also you can change the color of the backdrop by clicking on the color icon on the top of the properties bin for that and giving it any color you please uh, usually uh, for any kind of uh, composites I try to avoid these bright colors because um, usually these bright colors are very distracting and uh, they usually grab a lot of attention in the composite and therefore not usually recommended for a lot of nodes whereas I usually uh, have them only for read nodes or very important nodes as such so try to have bright colors only for things which are very important or things which you have to uh, don't have to search for all the time apart from the using the backdrop you can also use the sticky note which is nothing but a uh, simple text which you can keep next to any node for specific uh, reminders uh, let's say for example um, this is the final and immediately once I've done that I have a single name which tells final and I can keep it specifically wherever I want so for example I kept the final over here next to grade and therefore or anytime I come to this I know exactly what this is supposed to be doing or for example this is supposed to be reflection or this grade is uh, editing the shadows I can put in a specific uh, template right next to it or some text right next to it explaining what exactly it's doing so it's a very handy tool if you are working with a large team or of course like well, let's say you're creating a tutorial like this and distributing the file so in such a case you're yeah, having such uh, uh, laid out notes will make it easier for people to understand it now apart from this uh, uh, basically just make sure you have a specific convention that you use as you had seen in the previous videos I had already set up a couple of things like uh, arrows going in different directions have different colors that is on my other comp so anyway uh, this was a video which I wanted to create just to give you an overview about how to uh, lay down your nodes for composites as we go along in the further videos I'll be giving you much more advanced methods I'll be creating much more complicated networks uh, whatever you see here I'll be uh, showing you different ways of compositing the same thing uh, something which is a bit easy and then harder and a harder method so therefore up to you you the, just practice as much as possible just try to get the concept in so that you can create the best output possible so right now this is pretty much the uh, for the video I'll see you in the next one and hopefully you understood whatever I said today about uh, laying down your nodes in the right manner in the next one we'll actually start by compositing this image itself so I'll see you there